Hi, my name is Jean Ann Harrison and I'm a mobile tester and I've been testing mobile devices for the last 15 years or so. It's been a long time. Anyway, one of the aspects I wanted to share with you and I wanted to uh, explain was the definition of performance testing and the concepts that you need to think about when you're applying to your mobile apps. The first one is response time. Yes, that is something that most people think performance is all about. And that is only one concept of four. The second one is load. How much can the mobile app handle? The third one is stress testing. And that is testing beyond the known thresholds. And the fourth one is endurance testing and making sure your mobile app can handle the expected endurance of running longer than one would expect. This concept is something that isn't always appropriate for all mobile apps, but it is something that should be considered. Now, there are four different types of mobile architectures that you also need to apply the concepts to. For example, mobile native apps. Mobile native apps requires one to apply feature level testing. So it's accessing things on the device itself like audio, camera, LED lights. A big one is storage. That is a factor with load testing. And I have a story about that. And that is when I was testing a medical device and the device itself reached a storage limit. And remember, devices are smaller than your regular computers that you work on. So it can't handle a terabyte of storage, at least not at this time. So you need to think about the type of testing for a mobile native app and what is applicable to that app. The next type of app is a mobile hybrid app. This type of app is very complex and the type of testing that is required. For example, the, uh, the hybrid app accesses a web server as well as device features. So now you've got a, a level of combinations of types of testing that you need to think about and plan for. And remember, with, with a web server, you're dealing with the hardware of the actual web server, something that you don't really have any control over, but you need to know and understand how that mobile hybrid app accesses the web server and really understand how it affects the mobile hybrid app and how it behaves. So again, be very careful about understanding these kinds of mobile apps. The third one is mobile web app. Access is complete to the web server. And mobile website, same thing. So those two types of testing are far simpler than a mobile hybrid or a mobile native app. The combinations of the types of testing on a mobile web app and a mobile uh, website is that you have to understand how to test mobile or how to test websites and how to test it from a uh, per performance point of view. And so this is something that you wanna consider something called scalability. Now it could also be, scalability could be a factor for both mobile native and mobile hybrid. Mobile native is pretty much hardcore though. It's hard coded, it really can't uh, scale it any bigger than it already is. However, there might be something that a developer could do. As I have seen where we changed uh, scalability from a different point of view in, in that we accessed it with software changes and allowed the scalability to not be bigger, but to change the way it behaves. And that's something that's important to think about. So when it comes to different architecture types, you need to plan out for the different types of performance testing. And one thing I will share with you was a mobile website that I recently tested for a friend of mine with a new website was that they went ahead and they 
created a website that had various pages. And in the middle of all these pages, I had one page that didn't load with a, an expected response time. Actually, it was quite slow. And what ended up happening was after talking with the developer was I found out that, oh, this is accessing a different web server than all the other pages. Why? I don't know. I don't understand the, the decision, but that was the decision by the developer. And so I just let them know that this is what I found and they are thinking about changing the way that they're doing things. And this is something that we need to consider to inform the developer and understand from that perspective why they made the decision. I will state finally, make sure that you test and review your log files to understand what happens when. This will give you a very strong indication of isolating problems. And I have found a lot of bugs that nobody ever finds but me because I took the time to read and study log files. So please do that and happy testing. Thank you.